Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the launch of the book Evaluation for Inclusive and Sustainable Rural Transformation, the World Bank Series on Evaluation and Development, Volume 9. Organized by the Independent Office of the Evaluation of the International Fund for Agricultural Development, or EFAD. My name is Joanne Leverton from EFAD and I'm happy to be the MC for this event. The Independent Office of Evaluation of EFAD, or IOE, is an important division in the organizational architecture of the fund. It reports directly to the executive board of EFAD, ensuring its evaluations are independent. By not being directly responsible for the policy setting, design, or overall management of the subject of evaluation, conflicts of interest and undue pressure are avoided. Written by a team of expert practitioners at IOE, Evaluation for Inclusive and Sustainable Rural Transformation gives an overview of evaluation practice at EFAD. The book is part of the World Bank series on evaluation and development, and it looks at how evaluation practice has evolved to reflect, respond to, and inform changing expectations of development assistance. It reveals how evaluation products and methodologies have, been, uh, have benefited from key reviews, revisions, and lessons learned and how they progressively strengthened EFAD's capacity to assess its operations and better understands its results. The book concludes with reflections on some of the challenges that lie ahead and how the independent evaluation function can evolve to meet these future challenges and enhance the impact of development initiatives on people's lives. This event includes a presentation of the book by Oscar Garcia, a director of IOE, and as Volder Feinstein, professor in the Evaluation Master's Programme of the Complutense University of Madrid. And this will be followed by a panel discussion on the evolution of evaluation. This will, this will be chaired by Nicolette Steimer, who's the former president of the European Evaluation Society and former professor of social policy and evaluation at Sapienza University in Rome. The panelists are IOE Deputy Director Fabrizio Filoni, Independent Researcher Per Eklund, former IOE Deputy Director Mona Bishai, and IFAD's Acting Director of Sustainable Production, Markets and Institutions Division, Paolo Severi. For the question and answer session that follows, there'll be the traditional face-to-face -face, uh, questions and answers. But we're also going to be using an online interactive question platform called Mentimeter. If we could put that on the, on the screen behind, please. So just to quickly tell you how it works, if you get a question that you don't have a chance to, to ask, you can use your smartphone to project the question onto the screen. Um, you have some information on this on your chair, but I'll just run through it. You've just got to make sure your phone's connected to the internet and those instructions are on the blue card on your, on your, on your chair. You open your web browser and you go to www.menti.com. And then there's a code displayed there, 406460. You type that into the, onto the screen and then you get a chance to type your question. Your question will come up anonymously. It will be shown on the screen and the moderators and the panelists can pick up on them when, they, when appropriate and when they have an opportunity. If you have any problems connecting, please ask the messengers for assistance. We also have our virtual audience with us, and welcome to all of you who are watching on the webcast. And you, people are also following on social media through the hashtag Evel for Inclusive Transformation. I'd now like to invite Cornelia Richter, who's the Vice President of EFAD, to take the floor for the opening address. Thank you, Thank you Joan. Very good morning, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues. It gives me great pleasure to see how much interest uh, you're, uh, uh, you're indicating by your presence uh, here, because I'm aware that there are a lot of uh, competing occasions in Rome, like every day. But I can assure you this is the right choice coming here to this occasion. Uh, I'm also quite sure that we will have the opportunity to uh, dive into a very stimulating discussion with our two authors. Uh, Oscar Garcia and Osvaldo Feinstein. But before we begin, um, I would like to share with you some of my personal observations and also remarks on the role of evaluation. I've joined IFAD uh, only in February, but um, I'm deeply impressed to see which particular role 
IOE uh, and uh, the recognition IOE receives also among our member states has uh, um, received in the last years. And I think behind this is hard work, but also a very far-sighted decision long time ago uh, when it was decided to create an independent office. I think you can't emphasize it strongly enough because this is not taken for granted in many institutions and IFA takes pride that we have one of these independent offices for evaluation. Uh, I like to mention this because it also indicates the seriousness of our management to make sure that there is no pressure, no influence, but that we really provide independent information on our ongoing programs, on our internal policies, and I think this worked out quite well. Looking back into the last 40 years, I think this office really has indicated that they've provided very valuable information and that these results were highly recognized also by our member states, by the management, and that it really proved to be utilized and that they were implemented. In the beginning, evaluation was only a function of management, but with this independent role, I think they provided really a, the, uh, the, the basis for a critical dialogue between the member states, the management, uh, and also uh, academics. And I've learned that up till now, we just collected also the latest additional evaluations. IOE has provided more than 450 evaluations since 1983. And what we clearly can say is that independent evaluations have helped fine-tune IFAD's business model in critical development areas. As a result, over time, IFAD has assessed what works and what doesn't work in promoting gender equality, natural resource management, and adaptation to climate change. For example, the 2014 evaluation on IFAD's commitment to promoting the development of rural youth has led to a number of initiatives. Today, youth is one of our um, uh, four mainstreaming areas. An action plan on youth clarifies how IFAD will target youth and youth sensitize country strategy and project designs. But evaluation has also allowed us to examine our internal processes with a very critical eye. The evaluation of the three-year field presence pilot program in 15 countries showed positive results for operational effectiveness and partnership building. It led IFAD to expand its field presence and establish 40 country offices. The value of evaluation depends on how its outcomes are integrated into an organization. The follow-up of recommendations is crucial to the process. And again, I think with a very unique tool IFAD is providing uh, the President's report um, on the implementation of status of evaluation, recommendations and management actions. Uh, we have a tool which really makes sure that we learn from this um, evaluation. Again, it supports IFAD's accountability and willingness to learn from what has happened so far. In the future, the focus of the uh, IOE on learning and accountability should enable IFAD to develop even better instruments and policies for promoting inclusive and sustainable rural uh, transformation. New tools of evaluation, including measurements, methodologies, ICTs, will continuously advance uh, the work. And if there is any single lesson to draw from this book, I think it's that evaluation must remain a work in progress. I think evaluation which is not inhaled, which is not implemented, is like a book which is not read in, in a shelf. And uh, in so far, I can assure you that also in future, management will give a lot of attention what will be provided by uh, evaluation. And we are grateful that now we even have an historical back, uh, 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 view back into, uh, into our historical roots of evaluation, but also the lessons learned. And again, also this will pave the way for the future. Thank you very much.
Thank you. I'd like to call on Oscar Garcia, director of IOE, to uh, present, present the findings of the book. Thank you very much, uh, Joanne. <clears throat> Good morning, uh, dis distinguished uh, board member representatives, your excellencies, IFAD colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. I am delighted to welcome you to the, uh, today's launch of the book uh, Evaluation for Inclusive and Sustainable Rural Development. This book, as you know, presents uh, the evolution of the evaluation function over uh, a 30-year uh, period and how IFAD has transitioned uh, towards a more robust and evidence-based practice to improve the lives of rural people around the world. It takes us on a journey of, uh, uh, in which evaluation has evolved from a management function into a well-established independent office reporting directly to the executive board as ways of improving the checks and balances within the organization to improve its performance. But before delving into the uh, presentation of the book itself, I would like to take this opportunity to express my appreciation to the book contributors, who are many and very important, for their valuable and support and expertise. As uh, Cornelia said, we are really uh, tapping on a wealth of expertise that uh, precedes our work, and that's why I would like to acknowledge the work done by Luciano, uh, Luciano Lavazzari, my predecessor, who firmly established the, the independence of the evaluation function within IFAD architecture. He fought hard to achieve that, and the, the architecture is now in place, and we all benefit from uh, the hard work and visionary actions that at that time, the executive board, the IFAD governing bodies, and uh, the evaluation office took in uh, moving the agenda forward. I also would like to thank the contributions of Ashwani Muthu, uh, former IOE Deputy Director, Fabrizio Felloni, Mona Bichet, who honors us uh, with her presence today, Caroline Haider, Margos Karpetek, Paolo Silvieri, Khalid El Harisi, and Per Uklund. All of you have contributed to important sections to count this uh, story of the evolution of the evaluation function. I would like to also express my sincere appreciation to IFAD management. Uh, and if at senior management to President Gilbert Umbo and his team, well uh, represented here by uh, Ms. Cornelia Richter, if at vice president. The constructive dialogue uh, established with senior management confirmed by their contributions today speaks volumes about the commitment that they have to improve the performance of the fund based on feedback provided by independent evaluation. It takes courage to do so because no one likes to be criticized. However, it's the only way to improve performance, and there is always room for, for improvement. And that is why this professional approach, this commitment to evidence-based, that to inform our debates and see how can we really contribute better to reduce rural poverty around the world is truly uh, remarkable, and I'm honored to be part of this constructive dialogue with management. This launch would not be complete without mentioning the special role that the IFAD governing bodies played in shaping the oversight and evaluation function of the fund. In March this year, we celebrated the 100th session of the evaluation committee. Uh, and this subsidiary body of the executive board has really contributed greatly in shaping, firstly, creating the enabling environment for this dialogue to take place. As you know, this dialogue sometimes is difficult, sometimes it's less difficult, but it's always necessary. And uh, we need to thank our governing bodies for having established that enabling environment. Now, nowadays, there are colleagues in other international financial institutions who are about to establish an evaluation committee. And they want to learn from IFAD experience. And in that sense, IFAD is really leading the way into a solid ar uh, architecture that ensures that checks and balances are there. Last but not least, I would like to take the opportunity to express my gratitude and recognition to IOE staff. They are the most committed, passionate, and professional staff you could ever think of. And it's a great privilege for me to work with them. 
As you are aware, in every evaluation, IOE engages with a large number of people, including consultants, international consultants, national consultants, short-term, long-term staff, research assistants, enumerators for the service that we conduct in the rural areas, associates, program assistants, communication experts, editors, designers, interns, and various staff in IFA that support our work with commitment to the highest quality standards. They are always there in our presentations to the executive board. They are always there to ensure our communications run smoothly, our travels, and so on. And to all of them, to all of you who over these 30 years have contributed to building a robust evaluation function, a very big thank you. As director of the Independent Office of Evaluation, I am only the bearer of a long tradition of professionals dedicated to improving the performance of IFAD as an institution committed to eradicating rural poverty and promoting sustainable and inclusive rural development. I feel truly honored to contribute to this process. I would like to finally thank all the colleagues from IFAD, FAO and WFP, our Rome-based agencies, organizations, sister organizations, to the students from La Sapienza University and other guests who are with, here, with us here today, and to our audience following us on webcast. And I would like now to give the floor to Osvaldo Feinstein, who has been a mentor to many of us. He's a reference in the field of development evaluation, having led significant publications throughout his uh, very rich uh, life and career, as well as an influential actor in this journey in IFAD. Osvaldo. Thank you, Oscar. <clears throat> Oscar. It's nice to see that the room is pretty full. Uh, for me, it's a great pleasure to be here at IFAD for the launch of this book. Um, it's also an opportunity to be again with friends and colleagues like Per, Mona, Paolo, uh, Fabrizio. Also, uh, I see Rui de Villalobos, who, with whom I started to work at IFAD in 1982. Uh, in the early stages of IFAT. Uh, by the way, at that time, uh, the, the Monitoring and Evaluation Unit was part of management, which has a logic that sometimes is not appreciated. At that time, there were no projects to evaluate. The role of the office was to develop monitoring and evaluation systems in the world. And IFAT played a pioneer role in doing that. But at that moment, it made sense, the institutional arrangement that IFAD had. Uh, and there has been a whole evolution, which is described in the book, when it started to make sense to have an independent office. And uh, Oscar already uh, indicated the struggle that that uh, uh, led to, and the book describes in detail the whole process. Uh, I wish to make three points. When I was at IFAD, I learned that it's always convenient to try to make three points. So the first one that I want to make is one that may have surprised some of you. And it is that this book is part of a collection of volumes in a World Bank series on evaluation and development. Now, this makes sense because the World Bank has always been very interested in the way in which IFAD approaches evaluation. Uh, in the 80s, there was a series of books on methodological aspects that were joint books by the World Bank Evaluation Department and IFAD's Evaluation Unit. And some of you may know that the current Director General of Evaluation at the World Bank and has been there for six years, is a former IFAD staff. And before her, there was also a manager at the evaluation department that was an IFAD staff. And this is an interesting reversal, because at IFAD, there has been several uh, World Bank staff that joined IFAD in operations. But 
this was the case where people from evaluation migrated to the bank in evaluation. Um, so given this interest of the World Bank in evaluation, it made sense to have the book as one of the uh, items in the World Bank series on evaluation and development. Uh, second, uh, referring to IFAD's evaluation experience, as I was mentioning before, the, start, the work of IFAD in this area started with the support to the development of monitoring and evaluation systems for IFAD funded projects. This started in the early 80s, late 70s, but early 80s mainly, and it was the only task that uh, that office was doing, jointly with some methodological work. But the time came later for doing this type of work, that is uh, uh, evaluation still to censo, for which independence is so important, and the type of evolution that led to this independence uh, is described in detail in the book. And this leads me to the third point, which is the, the audience for the book. And the first audience is if at staff and consultants, because the book provides a perspective on evaluation on the roots of evaluation at IFA, but also on the challenges that um, uh, evaluation faces and the way in which uh, evaluation can contribute to the development effectiveness of IFAD. Second, the book also may provide insights, orientations, ideas to people in the evaluation community. Uh, and I'm delighted to see here Carlos Tarazona from a FAO's evaluation office and the colleague from WFP also, who shows at least that the Rome-based agencies in evaluation now are very much connected. We have other sources of evidence to confirm this, but uh, this is a difference from what was the case years ago. And thirdly, uh, the international evaluation community and also development practitioners can get from the book a whole set of lessons learned from evaluations that can nurture their work in um, development and not only in evaluation, but also and particularly in development evaluation. So uh, I hope that you will find the book uh, both useful and interesting. Sometimes we read some interesting stuff that is not useful and vice versa. But here, hopefully, you will find both together. Thank you very much. You might be surprised to see me again taking the floor. With Osvaldo, we decided to have a sandwich approach to this presentation. So uh, I'm the bread and he's the substantive part, of course, right? Uh, but uh, I just wanted to highlight uh, that uh, we, as uh, Cornelia Richter mentioned, uh, are a work in progress. The evaluation function in IFAD is a work in progress. And therefore, I just would like to highlight a few of the challenges that we have looking at the future. And those challenges, following the example of Os Osvaldo, I would like to present in three topics. The first one is, of course, the context of the Sustainable Development Agenda, the SDGs. Uh, the SDGs imposes important challenges to the evaluation function overall and to IFAD in particular, because uh, we need to address the complexity of the development process. We need to address the interconnectedness of the various uh, sustainable development goals. That means that not only eradicating extreme poverty and eradicating hunger, they are related to gender equality, they are related to inequalities, they are related to natural resource management, uh, they are related to partnerships, and so on and so forth. And therefore, that is the context in which we need to continue evaluating rural development. And evaluating rural development, as you well know, is not easy. There is a scarce of data there. There is a scarce of, of evidence. That, and uh, getting a participatory approach of our end beneficiaries is difficult. We have just done a synthesis evaluation where we have identified that in the work 
the pastoral development, the pastoralists, are around 100 million people who are not necessarily reflected in national census because they are mobile, transhuman. transhuman you know. And therefore, we need to uh, uh, realize that the SDG agenda offers important challenges in integrating this complexity, but at the same time, opportunities. The second aspect of the way forward will be the incorporation of information and communication technology to the world of evaluation. We have had a conference on the role of ICT for improving the, the access to data, uh, to data uh, gathering, to data analysis, analysis, and to data dissemination to end beneficiaries. We will be preparing another publication on that conference, uh, mentioning the challenges and the opportunities that they bring to us. The opportunities are many. We have just launched, for instance, that in the 30 years of experience of the Independent Evaluation Office, all our evaluation products are written. And many of our end beneficiaries are illiterate. It's a paradox, right? So now we have decided to move into the development of podcasts for radio programs, because radio is still very popular in the rural area. And we are now translating the results of our evaluations into radio programs with the participation giving voice to rural communities. This was a simple initiative, as we call within IOE, a low-hanging fruit of our approach to ICT for development. But it could have a great impact into connecting rural communities in addressing the common challenges that they face in improving the quality of their lives. The third dimension that I would like to mention as we move forward is the one on partnerships. Partnerships because we cannot do this in isolation. We need more partners and we are increasingly witnessing the important roles that the private sector plays in rural development. They play an important role in providing not only access to markets, but also in providing jobs and employment opportunities. But so far, we know that for the small farmer, it is very difficult to interact with the private sector in an, uh, a fair term. And that is why we need to really enhance our analytical tools to see how can we support these partnerships that include the private sector, but also the academia and the research community into trying to find solutions for rural development that would lead us into a more sustainable and inclusive transformation of the rural sector. But uh, <clears throat> since this is a, a work in progress and it requires partnership, let me now invite the partners that are with us today to have uh, a, a panel who will be chaired by uh, Nicoletta Stame. And I warmly welcome the uh, next phase of our uh, presentation with the participation of a very distinguished panel. John, this is, the floor is now yours. Thank you. If I could, if I could invite uh, Nicoletta Stame and the panelists to please take your seats, you'll see you, you have your places indicated with the name tags. And Nicoletta, I hand over to you. Hello. Good morning. Uh, we start this new session. Uh, I'm very pleased to chair this session with the people who have a great uh, knowledge about what the IEO, IOE has done in the past and uh, can bring their own experience not only to discuss the book, but to discuss the content of the evaluation function inside IFED. Um, I just want to say a few words by myself in, before introducing the, the question I've asked, we have asked to all the participants of this um, panel is uh, 
what have been their impression in reading the book, what according to them has been the most interesting thing and the most interesting aspect of the book. And of course, the thread of the book is the evolution of the evaluation function from being a tool of the management to be an independent um, uh, function. And this is, as has already been said, is very important as a as an international trend, because as Osvaldo said and as Garcia uh, said, it is something that the whole development commu evaluation community is appreciating as a very important step. Uh, on the other hand, we all know, even from evaluation in different fields, that there are big problems that are shared but by all the evaluation community, and they have also been mentioned already. Uh, I just would like to pick up something that has been already said. The first thing is about uh, evaluation that, according to me, should not be seen as a criticism. As uh, Oscar Garcia said, people don't like to be criticized. But evaluation, if we understand evaluation as learning, as learning what works, not only what doesn't work, and what doesn't work may help us understand how it may be improved. So all our effort must be in doing and facilitating a participation to this great effort of understanding what works, of being proud of what works. We always talk about upgrading and upgrading what works. So we really should, our aim, I think, should be that people do not fear evaluation, but people want to enter into evaluation. And I think this is a place where this has been done and it can be also improved from this point of view. And evaluation is certainly a work in progress, so even what you have done is work in progress in the sense that you have, um, uh, you have indicated a path, but many things can be done along this path. And uh, I am very pleased to see that uh, your effort is that of talking to the evaluation community in general. There are a lot of things to be learned from the evaluation community in, in general about uh, what has been your own experience, because your experience can be brought to other places, to other fields, and that is very important. But now I would like to ask the people uh, who are here in this panel to say what have been their own impression reading this book, and thinking of what they have done, how they have been involved into this uh, activity, what do they feel? Does the book reflect their own experience? What else would they have said? And what else do they think to be something that could be in the future of this great experience? So I think I would, would first ask Mona Bishai, former <coughs> Independent Office of Evaluation Deputy Director, to say their, her, expression, her feelings and to tell us what she thinks about the book and the evaluation at IFAD. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nicoletta. Um, okay, my name is Mona Bishai, and my, I, there is a short bi biography of my life in IFAD and outside IFAD in in the, uh, in, in the papers that are on the table outside. First of all, I would like to thank Oscar Garcia, the director of IOE. I would like to thank Oswaldo, IOE staff, and all those who contributed to this book. I find this book an out outstanding record for the involvement of the evaluation function in IFAD, and I think it contains very precious lessons for the international community and for other evaluation outfits. On a personal um, level, I think it's written in a very clear, crisp, and objective style. And reading it was not only for me a memory, uh, a trip into memory lane, as, <laughs> as it was, but also it was a great joy. So congratulations for IOE and all who contributed to the book. Uh, in my view, the most interesting aspect of this book is, or uh, as a matter of fact, not this book, the most interesting aspect of the involvement of the evaluation process in IFAD is the emergence of a highly interactive and mutually reinforcing process between the evaluation function on one side and IFAD program management and management in general in IFAD. 
Um, um, I feel in a, a good position to make this comment because I am a bricklayer in IFAD and in particular a bricklayer in the evaluation division. And I, I have seen, I am seeing now around me many bricklayers, not you Fabrizio, <laughs> but uh, more of a, of a mature vintage, if I may say. So I, I also consider myself fortunate to have worked in IFAD in many capacities, not only for almost 10 years in the evaluation office, but also in the program management department. And it is this, in this perspective that I have read the book and I have judged its objectivity and the validity of the lessons it's, it, is, it is presenting. So I was uh, in one, in, in the, in, from one side a supplier of evaluations to the program management, and I was also, as a director of a, of a project division, I was a receiver of evaluation. So I was on the two sides of the fence, as it were. And that was a very great privilege and a great experience uh, for me. So my impression about the book comes from this perspective. So uh, just uh, to, uh, to, to explain a bit what is this highly interactive and mutually reinforcing uh, process. It's a two ways process. So from one side, from the side of evaluation, the evaluation function changed itself to reflect IFAD specificity mm -hmm. and changing strategic orientation. And on the other side, IFAD strategy and program and approaches have changed significantly and improved in reflection to the, of the evaluation results. And this is, uh, has been done in a relatively smooth way. Of course, there were tensions sometimes, but these tensions, in my experience, were almost always creative tensions. So we, we have benefited from the tension at the personal level and also at, at the divisional or, or institutional level. And I think this aspect, the smooth interaction between the two entities, is um, to, to a great extent unique to IFAD. I have come to know how other evaluation outfit work in UN organization, and I think this is a relatively unique aspect for IFAD. So uh, how did the evaluation function change in response to IFAD's strategic change and to IFAD's change in specificity? The first thing is what Oswaldo has mentioned in his introduction, is the, uh, the change of the nature of evaluation from a monitoring and evaluation unit to a monitoring and evaluation division to the Office of Evaluation and Study to the Independent Office of Evaluation. These changes did not come out from the air. It comes out, it came out as a result of the growth of IFAD program capacity, the evolution of its specificity, the strategy and programmatic emphasis. Of course, it also, and that's very important, it has also always reflected international best practice. The second way that the evaluation function has changed in response to IFAD changing as a development institution is the, uh, the, the, the change in the evaluation products itself. So we had some evaluation products that totally disappeared and were discontinued, like midterm evaluation, interim evaluation, completion evaluation, and the emergence of new products that are more suitable for the evolving nature of IFAD. These are country program evaluations. They have a slightly different name now corporate level evaluation, PCRV, project completion, project completion report validation, that's it, and impact evaluation. All these not only responded to the international best practice, but also, in essence, to the changing nature and the needs of IFAD. And this is really a very dynamic perspective. And the third and very important aspect of the changing nature of the evaluation function is the evolution of IFAD evaluation methodology. This is very important. Back in the days, evaluators, or us also, did not have 
to follow a unified methodology for project evaluation. Indeed, the internationally recognized criteria were used, but not in a systematic manner and not consistently in every type of evaluation, and there were no method to consolidate and aggregate the results of evaluation so that the institution and the evaluation committee and the board get an idea about the overall performance of a sector or a specific cohort of projects or indeed for the institution as a whole. So this is, this, the evaluation function discovered this uh, missing aspect. And it increasingly, increasingly realized that it's about time to do something about it. Again, I was privileged to be part of a team back in 2002, many of you wouldn't remember that, to um, develop the very first methodological framework for project evaluation that developed evaluation criteria that is a combination between the internationally recognized criteria and criteria that are specific to IFAD, given the mandate of IFAD as a poverty reducing or poverty alleviating agency and the impact that this institution would like to achieve on the ground. And I remember the struggle that we had, unfortunately Jean-Philippe Auginet is not around, the struggle that we had to find that methodology and the the complications that we went through to establish the indicators for that. And uh, actually, in 2003, we have used this methodology for the first time to consolidate uh, the results of a cohort of uh, projects. We had about 20 evaluations who, which actually used this evaluation methodology, it was mandatory now, the use of this methodology. There was a rating system that was included to be able to, uh, to, to consolidate and for the first time we were able to present to the evaluation committee and to the executive board the first annual report for the results of impact of IFAD operations and um, I, was, um, I am very fortunate that I was the uh, the overseer of the production of this report, and it was very well received by the evaluation committee and the board, and actually they requested us to continue produ producing it. So, yeah. I, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, just a couple of minutes. Couple of minutes, yes, couple of minutes. So, uh, just uh, going from there, now what we have, we have the second edition of evaluation manual, which is an incredibly sophisticated um, elaboration of evaluation methodology for, for IFAD, and we have the 15th, or is it 16th edition of the ARI, which, to it, which is really a flagship production for IFAD. The second aspect, I will go uh, in it very quickly, is that IFAD strategy and approaches have changed to reflect evaluation results. If you look to very many changes that happened in IFAD recently, including taking the direct supervision, decentralization, field presence, the, the incorporation of innovation and scaling up, it is all the results of evaluation finding. And I just want to, to, to say one thing, why is that so? Why is it that, that, uh, that uh, the program division and the program in IFAD and the strategy were able to easily internalize and willingly accept these results? First of all, the subject matter of the evaluation has always been a priority for the program division. Second, there is a very well-established system of agreement at completion point of the evaluation, and there is a very clarity, very clear specification of, he, of who should be doing what, and then there is a very rigorous system to follow up on the implementation of evaluation recommendation known as PRISMA, and last by, but not least, the all evaluation configuration not, or, or the, the various stages of the evaluation function have made a good effort to try to strike a balance between accountability and learning. And this is the essence of the exercise. Without this balance, I think we will never have the creative uh, tension that I have mentioned. Thank you very much indeed, and uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. <laughs> Mona, sorry to have 
had been interrupted, you, you were really telling us very interesting things from your own experience and how you saw the development. So it, it was fascinating listening to you, but I, we had some kind of limit, time limits. Thank you. Now I leave the floor to Paolo Silveri, uh, Acting Director, S Sustainable Production, Marx and the Institutional Division. Hello, it's me? No. Thank you. Thank you, Nicoletta. Thank you, Oscar. And uh, thanks to all of you uh, for, uh, for the invitation and the initiative, uh, in particular in a world where uh, very few people read anything longer than a tweet. Uh, having a book launch is really an act of courage that uh, almost touched heroism. So congratulations again. Uh, a few comments on... Uh, <clears throat> the evolution of, of the evaluation function, uh, I think most of us have been around long enough to see uh, a substantial evolution and also a, a, a contagious effect of evaluation uh, towards management. Uh, I remember times when uh, the word evaluation itself could not be pronounced outside the office of evaluation, which was a sort of a of a cluster and very isolated from the rest of the institutions that the offices worked in. And uh, that in order to maintain independence on judgment, you, sh you should also, as an evaluator, maintain a distance from anyone involved in operations. So the, the, <clears throat> the evolution that has happened since then is, is quite amazing. And actually, I see that at the end of this evolution, the, the evaluation function has prevailed in, in this contagion effect. Now we see evaluation being dealt with by most of management and, and several parts. In the case of IFAD, uh, we have Sara Savastano here, who's a newly appointed director of the Research and Impact Assessment Division in the Strategy and Knowledge Department. And she mainly deals with impact evaluations, the impact assessments, as they're called, to avoid overlaps. Uh, but you know, it is a division that has been created to do evaluation work. And all projects do evaluation work uh, as well. Management has its own dashboard. So evaluation has become uh, the business and the, a key part of management business anywhere everywhere at all levels and this is the result of continued efforts to highlight the importance of evaluation in development and uh, <clears throat> eventually you know the, the development community has realized that evaluation of judgment doesn't mean evaluation of analysis that independence of judgment does not imply independence of analysis that you can do analytical work together without losing your independence in giving your own judgment as, as evaluator of how an operation can be improved. <clears throat> so that is one observation I wanted to share. The second one is the learning value of our evaluation work. So not only its capacity to give independent assessments of uh, the effectiveness and the efficiency of development work, but also the learning value, and uh, also the, related to that, the evaluation office capacity to communicate the results of evaluation work. We all remember very lengthy evaluation reports that very few people read, and uh, that was the reflection of a very serious analysis and a very serious scientific work behind these reports. But it's, it's amazing to observe you know, how much distance has been covered in making sure that these analyses can be accessible to uh, managers who have very limited time, can be accessible to practitioners, can be communicated effectively. So the learning value 
that has made the monitoring and evaluation division evolve into an office of evaluation and studies, as it was called then. And some of these studies have actually opened new pathways where IFAD and other institutions have started working. I can think of organic farming as an example, but there's many other examples. Entire areas where the institution was not looking at, was not working in, that after uh, evaluations and studies pointed their fingers and their attention towards them, the institution itself followed. So uh, uh, a whole work of uh, pioneering uh, institutional uh, focus. And now the evaluation synthesis that uh, best represent uh, the learning function of, uh, of IOE. <clears throat> and lastly, the increased relevance of the evaluation function. And when we started working many years ago in this area, we used to evaluate projects. And then country programs or regional programs became more important and we started putting projects together to see the cross-cutting issues and overarching uh, elements determining the destiny of several projects together. And then we moved from programs to policies. And now the Office of Evaluation is involved in, in corporate analysis and in all major decision making. And the board is very uh, careful on the opinion uh, of the evaluation work there has been recently, the, the, the last board meeting, as many board members present today, there's a, a whole half day, or a whole session was taken by evaluation work, which would not, would not have been the case at all in, in the past. Let me just mention, while closing, uh, uh, you mentioned Oscar Luciano Lavizzari, and rightly so, uh, with all the work he has done to evolve the division uh, uh, and evaluation work into independence function. Let me also mention in this case uh, uh, the work of Pierre Spitz, who has been equally important, I believe, and who has been cherry picking many of the giants that are present today and uh, who have made a real difference in the relevance of evaluation in the development arena. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and you have said in a few words something that has enlarged our scope and they have brought us into the learning, learning aspect, which I think is what really is important at the moment to, to all of us. I would give the floor now to <coughs> Per Eklund, while he's also an independent researcher, so he's more independent than <laughs> anyone else here. <laughs> so to you the floor. Thank you, Dr. Sarmi, and thank you, Dr. Garcia. I feel very honored to be invited to this event. It's a very important event, and also a great personal pleasure to see, see my former colleagues, still friends, around the table and in the, in the audience. Um, um, I don't want to talk at great length. I, I think uh, I, I want to just echo the praise from my colleagues, I think um, the, the, this book uh, acts as a reflection exercise of, of, of great importance in, in, in setting out the path in, in the forest of, of uh, uh, internal dimensions, how to treat and use evaluation. In short, talking about the internal efficiency, the evolution in IFAD management and interaction between IOE and, and the PMD, etc., and, and, and outside. Uh, I want to talk about, you know, where we are at the moment, to shift to that. And we all know that uh, in, in development now, in the world, uh, there's a lot of gloom, and justifiably so, with climate change, uh, and, and also with falling aid flows. So poverty, poverty is increasing in absolute forms, um, compared with 17 years ago, according to the recent um, announcement from, uh, from FAO, uh, uh, Sentinel obs observations I received a week ago. So poverty increasing. So. Is there, in, in this context, a bright future for IFAD? And, and, in, in, and by implication also, what is the role then for 
IFAD Evaluation Unit, IOE, you know, moving ahead. I think there's a bright future. But I want to, and, and to, to this end, I want to speak that we, to the point of incentives. What are incentives? What is the nature of incentives in evaluation? You know, what drives evaluation? What drives learning? And we know that knowledge is power. So empowering beneficiaries, that's our rhetoric. But, you know, what, what is it all about? And, and just to move up a bit, um, the special development, sustainable development goal number one, uh, number one, it states learning how to address poverty in all its form. And, and number two, or number, f number five, it, it, sustainable development goal is um, learning how to empower all women and girls. And uh, my, what, I, what I hope, what, what I would like to see from uh, IFAD as such, and, and spearheaded by a future or the continuing work of uh, IOE, is more focus on addressing poverty in all its forms. And that means non-income poverty. Because with climate change, uh, water stress, infections increase, Insects increase, so non-income poverty, non-income poverty is rising. And World Bank President Sheng in 2005 stated that, you know, and then prospects were brighter in the world globally, that to address, to reduce absolute poverty by 2030, you know, in, in 25 years, we have to address non-income poverty. Is IFAD, has IFAD yet learned how to do it? Uh, the, the question is open for discussion. Uh, the, the work which is reflected in this, uh, in this uh, book and which is supported by, by uh, colleagues around, around me, and particularly Fabrizio Folloni, we, we, did, we did service in, in the field interviewing farmers, uh, interviewing women. And, and uh, the message came through very strongly that knowledge is power, that, uh, that women, particularly poor, uh, disempowered women, become empowered when they access nutrition knowledge. Why is nutrition knowledge more important than other knowledge? It's more important than other knowledge because if, if the child is undernourished, is stunted, that means growth, its physical growth is retarded, also its brain circuitry is retarded. And even if that, sh that child or infant should be lucky enough to, to, to capture, capture, be adopted somewhere with better nutrition and, and, and environment, the, uh, by, all, by all evidence, scientific evidence, Lancet has written a lot about it, that child will grow up with, with high probability of disease, chronic disease, diab diabetes, and blood pressure, etc. You know, so the so that for the most uh, vulnerable people, which are the rural poor and particularly then poor women, disempowered women, the situation is in, is in many countries is worsening. And I think if it has a bright future, if it moves into this direction, and that has to do also with, 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 with uh, spreading its message and, and, and to development partners, and thereby I think it, it's a priori it could get more funding, become more powerful, and also for an, an instrument for, for vertical and, and uh, for horizontal and vertical change with development partners, not least civil society. When we did workshops in, in, uh, in uh, Nepal, when we did workshops in Zambia, we always invited uh, civil society representatives. We also invited uh, uh, facilitators who could, could then tell the, the audience, the workshop participants, program managers, but th we are just transient, we are just pausing, we will not come back as an evaluation team. But please be, be, be aware that your children's future is compromised. Child stunting in 1998 in the southern province of Zambia was increasing in spite of, 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 of a regional project, um, IFA project in 9, 10 district, and also our development partner. And by, by, by then listening to the discussion in that workshop, 
the, and then comparing the results of the, of the, the, the own participant of the project manager's impression or recorded, uh, recorded uh, perform their recording of project program performance, we what the team went out to do, they, we, they themselves pre uh, present a recommendation to the senior government official in the capital to, to address issues such as lack of counterpart fund and, and, and positions, project positions. Not so again, what, what is the power, what is the incentive of, 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 of evaluation? Incentives will only bring traction if it, it, if it imp, imp, impacts change, and very often it's a change within the government structure, where civil society, call it political pressure if you like, but just call it common sense in, in and over there, puts pressure on that we don't accept, especially it, when there's a free press and there is, there is budding democracy and people nowadays speak out and you have the social media. So they put pressure on, it, it not just a document as policy says, probably of little impact you know, on the government shelf somewhere and, and the, the, the business as usual continue. So incentives in terms of knowledge and knowledge by whom putting, putting informed knowledge, saying we, we, we know now enough to, to criticize us. When we, to criticize, I mean, they know enough that we, if you don't perform, they will not vote for the, the, the political party in power in, 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 in that particular country. When we, when we had a workshop in Nepal in 1999 and in, in 2000, the civil society representatives, particularly women, women's society, said this is the first time we were invited to participate in a government workshop. Minister of Finance always said no to us. So again, you know, the, 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 the power of, of informed knowledge uh, is extremely important and, and understated, and that brings me to incentive. There's a, there's a very honest reproduction of, of the difficulties in, on page um, 95 in, that, in this book, where it states a uh, relation to experience from Philippines. The project arrangement for monitoring and evaluation failed to deliver messages about poverty reduction and implementation effectiveness. It's page 95, and it ends by, by the statement, the challenge going forward is to find a way to communicate findings and guidance from contacts at project level into concepts that resonate with policymakers. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> uh, thank you very much. I think that uh, the, you, you mentioned something that has to do with our understanding of development, and you raised questions that the evaluation community is now discussing a lot about, because how to how to evaluate the indirect effect, how to evaluate the um, unexpected consequences of what our programs and our projects have produced. And all these non-financial aspects are exactly this type of aspects. There are all this, this debate about complexity, about how to take into consideration inside the evaluation discourse the type of understanding and learning that we have done on all these fields. So I think it's really uh, very much important that you raise these questions and that we are able to understand inside the field of evaluation how all the knowledge that we have from other type of, of uh, literature, other type of studies can be tra translated into tools for evaluating the project that they are doing. So I think this is a kind of a very interesting input that you have offered, and uh, I think it is a stimulus for the evaluation unit that, as uh, Mona was saying before, is very much interested in working out its own methodology. Because it's true that many of the problems you raised are common to the development community, but are, some are specific to the IFAD inter kind of intervention, and so it's a stimulus for going on on that. So thank you. Now the word is for Fabrizio Felloni. Thank you. Thank you. I'm really glad to be here at uh, the presentation of this book. It's very difficult to speak after the, the great passion that uh, has been put in this, in this discussion by, by Per. Per was also uh, here. A note of, of, of personal note was also my, my mentor here in, in the Office of Evaluation. 
And nowadays at IFAD we speak, uh, we talk about uh, econometric service. This is something that Per was doing at the time when this was not at all in the in in the, in, in the discussion with IFAD. IFAD at the time, if if you allow me, I'm very uh, sort of I have a long experience at IFAD also with, with, uh, with, with some very good parentheses in other organizations, but I have a long association with IFAD, so I, 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 I feel very strongly with IFAD. But at the time, IFAD was actually at the problem of numeracy. Uh, you, you know, you, you have a problem of, of limited literacy, and that time with the problem of literal numeracy. Uh, all, all that was quantitative analysis was something seen as, as suspect and, and, and not really belonging to, to what the organization was doing. But things, of course, have changed. But that is to say, Per was pioneering this type of work at the time time. Um, one of the questions by uh, Nicoletta was, what is not in a book? I think this book is very accurate on the evolution of, uh, of, the, of the office and uh, the importance in the organization. Something which, of course, you will not be able to find in this book is uh, how, what was behind the changes. And the changes that are described so well here were, were not so, always so smooth and simple and, and Cartesian, if you want, in, in the evolution. There was a lot of debate around everything. Uh, the, the changes that we had in the, in the type of products, evaluation products, that we have were not uh, very simple changes. There were, there were a lot of uh, even epic debates sometimes on where, what we should we evaluate, where should our resources go to as a priority. Our methodology also, uh, adopting a call methodologies, that was not a simple decision taken uh, overnight. It was a long debate that, that, that it took. Uh, one of the things, um, at the time when I joined uh, IOE the first time, and I think it was the very, very end of the, uh, of the 1990s, uh, at that time, the, the focus of evaluation was mainly on projects. And there was a reason for that, because if you think of, of IFAD now, now we do have uh, things such as direct supervision with country present. At that time, in reality, IFAD was doing the project design and financing, and that was more or less what it did. And uh, with a little bit of simplification, it finished there. So there was a third party organization looking at project implementation. The project, what we, uh, we, we call now country program managers, were called project controllers. The name already tells you something. And they were not really controlling projects. It was, it was a misnomer, but again, the focus on projects. And at the time, the evaluation was a lot focused on, on, fill, on, on and it is still, fortunately today, we, we retain this aspect, but it was very much providing resources to um, uh, project uh, evaluation with long uh, field visit, long missions, because it had to uh, close a gap of knowledge which was not there. At IFA, we, did, we could not internalize our knowledge about project implementation. We couldn't because we were not involved in that. That was the different configuration of the organization. Uh, of course, uh, things, things have changed, and now the focus on, on evaluation has moved in a way more to higher level type of evaluation, which means country strategies, which means corporate level evaluations, also thematic type of evaluations. We've not lost, and this is a good thing, we've changed, but we've not lost our foot on the ground. Mm -hmm. uh, so we, we still do retain uh, the, the opportunities of, of visiting uh, the field and, and spending time in the field, sometimes in very remote areas. Um, we, we have revamped recently also our, in a way, interest and curiosity for, for, for data collection. So we have not lo lost that, fortunately. But in a way, uh, we have evolved because the organization has evolved. Um, because now you have uh, direct supervision, you have country presence, and, and which didn't exist. And, and partly, I would say, this was also stirred and inspired by our own uh, evaluations, when we evaluated country presence, when we evaluated uh, supervision. And consider these changes also at the time were really uh, the object of very warm debates. Um, in some of our evaluations that came out with the idea at the time that IFA should uh, have a country presence, uh, were uh, found the response which said, well, this is totally absurd. You don't understand the way in which the organization is working. So, there was a lot of uh, courage that we had to take and challenge um, in, in challenging the, the way the, the, uh, the model of the, uh, of your, the business model of the organization. So that was part. That's something that you don't find, uh, we're not finding the book, but it has been part of the way we've been working. Um, the, other, the other thing is, um, I would say, what is also is described quite well here is the evolution of the methodology. When, when I joined IOE at the time, you could define what was existing there as a uh, 
forcing a little bit the word as a sort of creative anarchy, methodological anarchy. Uh, don't forget the, the, the adjective creative. Uh, because at that time, we, do, we did not have a sort of common structure, common criteria. We had sometimes excellent questions, and sometimes we had very good evaluation uh, products, but it was very difficult to extract information. Nowadays, you can do it easily. So you, you, you can afford to have a synthesis of what your, your evaluation findings are being. At that time, it would have been a, really a, a, a titanic job to go through your evaluation and extract findings. Now you can do it uh, in, in, a, in a much easier manner. And this really has caused uh, a, lo a lot of debates inside uh, our office and, and, and outside. I think the other thing is, uh, so we have really worked on, on having a more homogeneity in the way we presented findings, but uh, I think also always with an attention to uh, being rigorous and, and grounding the, the evaluation findings in, in facts and, and, and in data. And um, I think nowadays we, 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 we are of course, no, um, uh, no evaluation office and no methodology is, uh, can be perfect forever. We are still in evolving. We, this year, by the way, many of you might know we are going to have a, uh, a, a peer review, an external peer review evaluation, so the evaluators will be evaluated. And that will be another good opportunity for uh, seeing ourselves through the mirror of, of, of other specialists that come from outside. And I think there we'll, we'll, we, we can expect changes in the future and evolution in, in our products, uh, in our methodology. And I think it's, it's, uh, th this is really uh, important. I think some of the, uh, of the future uh, challenges, if you will, one is to um, benefit more and more of the from the opportunities that technology gives us. So using more and more uh, what, what technology in, uh, in, in computational technology, data collection, and also uh, information technologies allows to do to have more uh, better data at, at low cost because we operate on a shoestring uh, in our evaluations, but still uh, high quality data and, and low cost. And maybe ourselves, we have, a, we have, a, we have a, a duty of being creative in, in coming up with, with new ways to, to, uh, to, to collect data and to analyze them. I think also new uh, evaluation products uh, are the products that we have now the best one to help uh, IFAD management guide their, ch their, their strategic choices at the, uh, the, the corporate level, at the country level, maybe the regional, sub-regional level. Uh, that's perhaps an era where we can cover a bit more. But I think I, I think proud of one thing which has not really uh, changed so far, it, and, and it is the, our attention still on the operational individual projects. Even with the best corporate structure, even with the best country strategy, our instrument is still project. So we still need good projects, eh? in, 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 and not just TIFAD, but also other international organizations. We still need good, uh, good projects, and for that, we still need information and data and analysis that allows us to uh, keep up the quality of, of the design. I will stop here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Well, if I can give a few comments on what you've said. First of all, I think that uh, the fact that you've stressed uh, being on the ground from the point of view of IFAD and from the point of view of evaluation is really important. It's a point to be kept, and I think it's uh, something that gives you much more leverage on what you're doing in, in evaluation. Um, from the point of evaluation methodology, my impression is that you, are, you have said that there was a kind of anarchy, and now there is uh, something of uh, more harmonization, homogenization. Here, are you there a bit more? I think that uh, perhaps even in the book, I think, I feel a certain too much uh, uh, worry of not being the same as other international institutions. There is this homogenization uh, uh, across the various institutions which is interesting from the point of view of comparing, but you have a specificity, and Mona also said, and I think you should there a bit more to find out, even from the point of view of uh, the, the non-financial uh, non, um, uh, uh, inequality, etc. Uh, th there should be something different, something that is, uh, I would say, a bit less conformist, if you can allow me this. From the point of view of evaluation products, what I think is a bit needed is uh, something that I would say, uh, instead of, of uh, uh, when we talk of unexpected consequences, we always speak of something that is negative. 
Uh, we did not expect that. We did something thinking it was good, and then we realized that someone else was, uh, had uh, damage and something like that. But in your work, you always find some good surprises. And these good surprises have not enough space in evaluation methodologies. It is something, sometimes it is always thought as something unusual, something strange. Uh, it, it happened in a way that we did not expect, so it doesn't matter very much because our theory of, of change says something different. I think that we are in the world of today where so many things happen that we did not expect. Uh, we should be able to understand what is going better than we expected and build on that, instead of considering it something that is an exception. So I think uh, you, have, uh, you have taken up this idea of the theory of change. It's wonderful. But the theory of change is not something that is fixed up there, so we have to simply test whether the theory of change works. The theory of change is really a work in progress. It's something that we have continuously to adapt with the people on the field, with the, with the, the programmers, the, with the designers. So I think if you were able to introduce this a, a type of tool that would enable you to make a more dynamic theory of change, understanding what works unexpectedly. That would be, I think, something that would be a great uh, opportunity for this learning function of evaluation. And I think you have all the tools for doing that. that that's my impression. <laughs> so thank you very much for all the contributors to this panel. Uh, I th want to ask if, um, first of all, if Osvaldo wants to say something, because I think he has something to say to add to this. <laughs> and then yeah. other people who want to make put well, questions just, or answers. Just very briefly, two comments on what was said, perhaps to open later the discussion. First, on what you just said, Nicoletta, I, I think that um, what is implicit in your statement is that there is a risk of bureaucratization and of evaluation. Uh -huh. Yes. And uh, IFAT has followed a bit too much the practice of the World Bank, for better and worse. And having been both at IFAT and at the World Bank, uh, I, have, I have perceived this. And uh, this is an area that is worthwhile to reflect a bit more. But let me relate this to a point that Paolo made in terms of something that uh, IFAD has done, which is very interesting, that evaluation now is not only the province, the domain of the evaluation office, but also is done by operations. That's very good. Yeah. And in an area where IFAD has gone beyond the World Bank is evaluation capacity development. This was done by the evaluation office in the past, but now it has been mainstream. And the, the prime, the project, the, the, the program for a, a rural it's a program in rural development, monitoring and evaluation, that is fully done by operations by PMD and uh, in all regions in the world. This is something that the World Bank has not been able to do. It has been able to mainstream uh, impact evaluation, but not capacity building in this way. So if I can be proud on that, and this is related to the first point that Nicoletta made. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Osvaldo. Um, I think we have reached a point where we have no more time for question and answer. I am sorry, because we have, we have a strict schedule. And so I think we could end this round table with thanking all the participants and thanking the possibility of having this discussion. And I would leave the word to the Vice President, Charlotte Salford, if she's here. I don't see her. Where is she? They, we can't, not because they ask me. <laughs> Perhaps while, while we wait for, for her, uh, let me very briefly react to the... They asked me to close to because the, she was here coming, but... Okay, sorry, sorry. You go ahead and maybe there are other questions before she comes. There she is. 
No, but I wanted to, to yes. thank the panel for the great uh, insights and, and the care with which you, you have uh, looked at the, at the book. You have also pointed out two important challenges that we have as uh, evaluation office uh, looking at the future. We will take them wholeheartedly. And uh, these are important challenges. As, as Perry was mentioning, we have significant uh, um, development obstacles to, to circumvent. And we hope that evaluation will continue providing evidence-based information on better understanding the reasons why performance is not as the way we wish it to be, and uh, providing also innovative and insightful approaches to address these development challenges. I want to thank you once again, and uh, I recognize the presence of uh, our Associate Vice President, Charlotte Salford, and Osvaldo will now uh, give the, uh, a book and, a copy of the book to the library of IFAD so that uh, this can be uh, also of the benefit of a larger audience. Thank you. So, you wanted to add something? I mean, shall we close here? Yeah, or yes, okay. Thank you. Plans. Charlotte, perhaps you can come up and accept the book for the, if, in, on behalf of IFAD for the library and then give your closing remarks. So thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I would like to uh, congratulate o IOE, and in particular Mr. Garcia, together with Mr. Feinstein, for producing this commendable book on evaluation of inclusive and sustainable rural transformation. I'm confident that it will provide a significant contribution to the literature on evaluation available in the international development community. I would like to emphasize the great value that IFAD places on its independent evaluation function. It represents indeed a critical instrument for promoting both accountability and learning, as well as for improving the funds, projects, and programs. By evaluating to what extent they are successful in alleviating poverty in rural areas and ultimately help to achieve sustainable and inclusive rural transformation. Coming back to the book, I'm indeed very pleased to see the range of topics covered, and in particular, the contribution of evaluations to the effectiveness of programs, policies and strategies for poverty reduction, gender equality, adaption to climate change, innovation and scaling up, as well as natural resource management. All in all, this book demonstrates the invaluable impact of evaluation practice in leaving no one behind in development and achieving the sustainable development goals and the 2030 agenda. Given also my role as head of the external relations and governance department, I'm delighted to see how this book reflects the significance of partnerships, their transformative potential, and the key role they have had in evolution of evaluation practice. I am referring in particular to the evaluation committee and the IOE executive board. It is also a pleasure to see that the diversity of the audience gathered here today is the further evidence of this. Lastly, I would also like to take this opportunity to commend IOE for bringing together distinguished authors and experts from the field of development evaluation. Through their expertise, they have all contributed to making this rewarding book of pivotal importance in demonstrating not only the successful evolution of evaluation at IFAD, but also, and more importantly, how evaluation, how evaluation can effectively enhance the impact of development initiative on people's lives. With these few remarks, I would like to close and once again congratulate IOE for this publication and for organizing today's stimulating discussion. Thank you for inviting me 
And thank you all here today for being so active in discussing. And uh, I look forward to reading this book very shortly. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Charlotte. And um, I'm sure everyone will agree that that panel provided a lot of interesting insight, in, not only into the evolution of evaluation at EFAD, but also into the evolution of EFAD itself as an organization and the many lessons that are there for the development community. I'm sorry you never got to ask your questions. I'm sure there's a, a lot of discussion that has uh, been generated by what you heard today. So the good news is that there's going to be a light lunch uh, served outside. And so please, will all of you join us? And I'm sure you'll have a good chance to discuss further with all our guests. Thank you so much for everyone for coming today. Thank you.